Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim Kelly, joined by KJ Zekman, Akeem Balam, and Justin Godsey in the yo, Miami yo, yo. Heat, led by LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Jawan Howard, not really, have just won their second straight NBA title, and LeBron James has won his second straight finals MVP behind a 37-point, 12-rebound, 4-assist, 2-steal, Game 7 performance where... Guys, we killed LeBron James for years for shooting and not driving, and it kind of seems fitting to make up for all those years in Cleveland where he shot the ball and lost, especially in the 2007 NBA Finals versus the San Antonio Spurs. It kind of seems fitting that he comes back and wins an NBA Finals Game 7 as the best player in the game shooting the ball, Akeem. Yep, that's how LeBron James is supposed to do it. That's what we've been, what we've been looking for all this time, and he took this game over 37 points, like you said, and also locking up his second finals MVP. LeBron James was the leader for the Miami Heat tonight, and as we've seen in most of these games, when he's the leader, when he's on, the Miami Heat are nearly unbeatable, and that's what the Miami Heat were pretty much tonight. I mean, it was a, it was a close game throughout, very competitive, but, but LeBron James was the difference tonight. And, Cage, I know a lot of people, when we, we've been doing this show since LeBron James last year in Cleveland, and, KJ, when me and you were really the two first people on the show, along with AC formerly, when we did the show originally when LeBron James took his talents to South Beach, a lot of people killed him, and I didn't have any problem with them killing him for leaving, but me and you kind of kept in perspective of the talent that this guy had, and I know that a lot of people were unwilling to do that, and they took away from the talent, and I think that... It's pretty much, I don't want to say we told you so, but we basically did. I remember back when uh, LeBron got, went down to Miami, took his talent to South Beach, and a lot of people uh, busted him about how he uh, was going to be with a bunch of other talented players like Wade and Bosch, and how that took away from his rep and how good of a player he was going to be and if he won championships and all that kind of good stuff. But tonight, I think LeBron really showed that even though he has talent around him, he is the key player, and he's going to take the shots at the end of the game. He's going to be that clutch guy. And now everybody saw tonight, game seven, clutch moment, up by two, ice at the game with a two-point shot, puts it basically out of reach, and makes his two free throws, and had an ex just an absolutely great end of this game. He had an absolutely great game six and set it in the game seven. He shot lights out with about 50% from three-point line, and he was he was beautiful. He was a facilitator. He was he drove when he could tonight, but he made his shots tonight. They gave him deep shots all game, and he took advantage of that. And earlier in the series, he hasn't really shot the three ball a lot, especially when he had space when he could have. But this time, he he took like 10, 12 threes tonight, and he made about 50% of them, and that was really the big difference in this game. He had a lot of good assists, a lot of clutch rebounds, especially at the end over Tim Duncan. I remember it was about 50 seconds to go. He had a nice rebound. He had a great game. This team team was just absolutely great. They played awesome. And all that energy that was in Game 6 that were in the Game 7, they, there wasn't a time in this game that I doubted that he were going to win. They played great. And you saw that he basically made the Spurs play their own game, and they beat them at their own game. That's exactly what happened in this game. You saw at the end of the game, the Spurs just couldn't hang on. They basically, it came down to who was going to fight to the very end, and the Heat got this one. We had a great game. You know, like, I put, it, it, it amazed me how from point to point in this series that we were so bad and so good at different times. And we had a great game. Bosch played great defense on Duncan, and I... And I'm not one to ever say good things about Bosch, but he had a good game against Duncan. And Daddy A, he was about, I want to believe, around 16, 18 points, I believe he had. Great game from him. Great game. He was clutch from the three-point line. The guy got kicked out to him. He was drilling it about 50, 75% of the time. It was, it was a fun time to watch. It was such a great game. Yeah. And 18 points from Shane Battier. Like KJ mentioned, Shane Battier broke the record. Him and LeBron James both broke the record, but Shane Battier had one more three. He broke the record for most threes in an NBA Finals Game 7 with six threes tonight. And Justin, I know that we put a little bit more of a positive spin on it. 
you got to give a lot of credit to what the Spurs did in this series, despite the fact that in Game 6 they really did have a chance and, and they should have finished it out. But I know that you feel a little bit differently because when the Spurs should have finished it out, Miami Heat fans were leaving the game. Um, seriously, it, it's just, it goes for all teams also, their fan bases also. Now, I'm the kind of guy who will go to games, rain, sleet, whatever, when you're inside a dome, your team is getting knocked down in a big t uh, type of event in the NBA Finals. Okay, the Miami Heat were down, but you know what, you never let, no, don't count out any team. It's not over till it's over. And the fans gave up on their team, the Miami Heat, in Game 6, leaving the court and everything. Stuff like that really pisses me off. I hate how fans do that. You go to a game, you buy your ticket, you leave, you know, it is kind of late in the game, but you know what, the Miami Heat fan made a big example of it yesterday. They, they counted their team out of the game. They thought that their team was going to lose. And then all of a sudden, the fans are trying to get back into the stadium. Why should they let those fans back in the stadium? They're not true fans. They're not fans of the freaking game. You do not let fans like that back into the arena. They're not true fans. You should get them out of there. You should not even be a Miami Heat fan if you're going to do that to your team. Got to give credit to LeBron James, the Miami Heat, winning the championship. Congratulations to them. You know, the San Antonio Spurs, they were in it. You know, with a lot of the injuries going for Tony Parker, you know, with his hamstring injury, Dwayne Wade battling through the knee injury. And, you know, Chris Bosh, got to give credit to the guy, too. You know, he played great defense tonight. His offense was not that great. But you know what? His defense was good tonight. LeBron James getting his second ring. Congratulations to him. You know, I wish the Miami Heat the best. Now all we have to do is, is look forward to J July 1st for the NBA free agency. Oh, we're getting to look forward to NBA, the NBA draft next week. But looking over to the Spurs aspect of things a little bit, Tim Duncan had the chance to make a layup to, I believe, tie the game or put it within one late in this one, and he missed the opportunity. And I think if LeBron James did this, we would have overanalyzed it if and Tim Duncan did it and I don't think we're gonna overanalyze it. I think we're just gonna look at it as that's one of those things that just happens in the game sometimes. Great players do miss great shots at big time. I mean Tim Duncan is one of the top ten players to ever step on a basketball court. And I think the bottom line is that for the Spurs, it's unfortunate because at different times Things came together in this series. Tim Duncan had 25 points in the first half of Game 6. Kawhi Leonard had a great series, but he may have missed a foul shot that could have won them the NBA Finals. Tony Parker played through some great injuries, but was shut down by LeBron James defensively tonight. And uh, he was inconsistent throughout the entire series, really. Manu Ginobili had one or two good games, and then was really bad the rest of the series. And Danny Green, who I had as my Finals MVP after five games, Danny Green finished off the series, 1 of 12, 1 of 6 from downtown, and Akeem, uh, Danny, Danny Green really cost them in this uh, Game 7, Game 6 really too. I think so, I mean, for some reason, where was Danny Green in Game 6 and Game 7? I was saying for a long time, I was saying, you know, that there was no way that after he had all those, if he hit all those three-point shots in those first five games, I was saying, you know, even throughout, even throughout Game 6, that if, that if they gave Danny Green the ball, perhaps, if he still had that three-point shot going for him, then that would have been probably another thing that may have pulled the San Antonio Spurs even pulled it further away from the Miami Heat in Game 6. And if he still had that three-point shot, they probably would have wound up winning this series. Mm -hmm. So what happened to Danny Green? He finally realized that he was no longer wearing the uh, Robert O'Reilly's jersey, and he came back to his old self or something like that. He was already a great three-point shooter, but he, for the first five games of this series, he was absolutely sensational. And you also going back to Mono Ginobili. Yeah, he had a great game five, but for the most part in this series, he did not help the Spurs cause at all. Of course he had the eight turnovers in game in game six. And then this game he was just an aberration. Late in the late in the game, in the fourth quarter. Seems like it was just turnover after turnover after turnover. He had one big three pointer that still kept the Spurs in the game and still gave them a little bit of a chance. But for us, as far as this Game 7 goes, Ginobili, um, you know, for the most part, Ginobili, he really cost them big time in this series with all these turnovers. And when I look also at this, also from a historical perspective, San Antonio Spurs were going into this series trying to win their fifth NBA championship. Now that I think about it, now that they've lost to the Miami Heat, I kind of think of this San Antonio Spurs team as a, as a less dysfunctional 2004 Lakers team. 
because that was a team that had Shaq and Kobe. Um, you know, Shaq was at the downside of his career. Kobe was just there entering his prime, and that was really the last year of the Laker dynasty. This could be the same thing for the San Antonio Spurs because you have Duncan in the rumors of retirement, you have Ginobili in the rumors of retirement, and you have Parker, who's still going to be a big-time star, but who knows what they're going to do around him. So this, this really, in a historical perspective, it kind of makes the San Antonio Spurs look a little bit more like that, like, a, like I just said a little bit earlier, a less dysfunctional version of that 2004 Lakers team that lost to Detroit. But, you know, they, they played a very great series for, for most of these games. They gave the Heat, for the most part, everything that they can handle. But when you're a team like the San Antonio Spurs and you're coached by someone like Greg Popovich, you're expected to win a championship. Yeah, I mean, that's very well said. And I think the point that you made about that th this could be the end of the run, I doubt Tim Duncan will retire. But Manu Ginobili, I could, I could see him retiring with some of the injuries he's fought through. Tony Parker will be back. But this is a team where it felt like early in the series, everything was coming together for. We had Gary Neal making all the shots. We, they had Danny Green making all the shots. Boris Diaw was playing great defense. Tiago Splitter didn't have a great series. But as a team, it seemed like someone different was stepping up each game. Kawhi Leonard, with the exception of that one missed free throw, uh, he played a hell of a series. And I think everything came together in, uh, in the end. In Game 6 and Game 7, it didn't come together enough because the talent of LeBron James, the talent of Dwayne Wade, and the timely shooting of Mario Chalmers, Mike Miller, and Shane Battier led the Miami Heat to their second straight NBA title. Now, KJ, we talked about this after Game 6 a little bit, but I know some people are going to try and go back to it. Uh, down the stretch of Game 6, there were a few calls that, that people felt like should have been made. The first one was the Manu Ginobili drive into the lane where Ray Allen stripped the ball. That, to me, was a 50-50 play. I could see how you thought that was a foul. I did not want to see the NBA Finals decided on, a, on, on foul shots. And then the Chris Bosh foul... Late in, or it wasn't a foul. Chris Bosh blocked the shit out of Danny Green in the corner, and it, he blocked him that much that Danny Green fell over, but it absolutely was not a foul. And I, I know people are going to try and go back and use that as an excuse and that David Stern rigged the NBA Finals or something along those lines, but in the end, I think that that's just it, it's stupid. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It is definitely stupid, and anybody that thinks that that those were foul calls that should have been called really don't know the game in NBA in itself because those a ref, are not, a ref is not going to blow an NBA Finals game over two free throws we said this before in the last video and that's just how it is that is NBA playoff basketball that is how it rolls especially in the Finals and in a game decision right there like you just can't you can't call something like that and that's plain and simple. And the box shot, if anybody's questioning that, that was all Barney stuffed him, like you said. So there's no question as to that, but like, like with Ray Allen, you, you can't call it out on, on that strip. Yeah, and th this series is going to go down as LeBron James second ring, LeBron James second NBA title, David Stern, thank God, his final year as NBA commissioner, and then you get Eric Spolster, who I've I've been critical of him in the past, but you've got to give a lot of credit to Eric Spolster in this series for the job that he was able to do. There is no credit about it. I am Tim Kelly for Akeem Balaam, Justin Godsey, and KJ Zekman. I'm going to be back with some other videos uh, talking about individual performances in this series and what this means for career aspects of certain players. But the Miami Heat for the second straight year are NBA Finals champions, and we will catch you guys next time.